I, I resisted the role of Othello for years because it seemed to me that it was um, problematic in that the assumptions contained in the short story on which the play is based, uh, the conventions and the traditions, both literary and theatrical, um, just reinforced the notion that Shakespeare and Cinthio, the short story writer, were suggesting that black people uh, behave as they do because of their ethnicity. The white man in black makeup um, wouldn't have any uh, issues with that. that. That was just a given. You'd be following the convention. And then actually, if you departed from the convention, um, you wouldn't, uh, you'd be denying the audience. A little bit like um, the Red Indians of John Ford Westons. You know, whenever you saw uh, a Red Indian ululating around the circled wagons, you knew that you know, that, that, was, that was what you went to see a Western for the shootout between the, uh, the Indians and the white settlers. Um, and it seemed to me that the convention of the Moor in Eliz Elizabethan England on the stage, not just in Shakespeare's plays, but in other, in other plays like the Battle of Alcazar, Lust's Dominion, the Stukeley plays, whenever a Moor appeared, that usually signaled something menacing or a threat to the uh, social, moral, and sexual order of society. Um, so uh, when a genuinely black actor comes to play the role, then it just seemed to me that it was important to be aware of the possible implications of the role um, and uh, resist any attempt to endorse what I thought might be racist assumptions. But look, let, uh, let me, that was just to give the background to that, that particular essay. But let me try to address the, 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 the issue here. Is, is Othello a racist play? Um, to, be fair to Shakespeare, we have to remember that he did not invent this plot. He adapted a short story by um, uh, Gerardi Cintio, uh, a Renaissance writer, um, who, uh, and this is one of the short story in his Gli Hecatomiti, I believe. And um, um, the, uh, the interesting thing is, you have to remember, in other words, that Shakespeare was um, committed to the same plot structure as Cynthia's. In other words, the black general ends up murdering his white wife. Um, the interesting thing is the changes that Shakespeare made to that, uh, that short story in order to get from uh, A to Z, so to speak. And um, the, uh, one of the interesting things is, of course, he invented certain things like the character of Rodrigo, he invented the storm, he invented the Turkish fleet, he invented the fit. Um, but um, what he uh, also invented or introduced was the racial epithets and the, uh, the rather fierce racial epithets, thick lips, sooty bosom, um, what she'd fear to look upon, um, the, the constant references to uh, uh, Othello's appearance. Um, so it's arguable then that um, although he was constrained by the original um, short story in plot terms, he was liberated when it came to introducing the, uh, the, the racial language. Um, now I know, of course, it's, it's a mistake to attribute the views of a character to the author, necessarily. But um, when Shakespeare says, when Shakespeare has Iago say, these moors are changeable in their wills, and then goes on to demonstrate precisely that, um, then I think it's fair to, to, to um, ask, well, was Shakespeare being a bit of a bigot here? Uh, the question arises also, did, did Shakespeare know any black people? Could he have known any black people? And the answer is yes, he could have. There were, I think it's been established, you probably know your colleague, Dr. Miranda Kaufman, who's written a book called Black Tudors, and whom I, I interviewed for a program that I made for Radio 3 about uh, Othello. And she's established through parish records that there were several hundred. Uh, well, she has um, records of um, bet two, between two and 300 black people on parish records, but that implies that there was a much larger black population in Elizabethan England. Um, there were three ambassadorial visits from ambassadors from the, uh, the Barbary Coast states um, because, of course, they had a common enemy in uh, Philip II of Spain. So the, uh, the, the North African states, it was in their interest to form an alliance with Elizabeth I. Uh, 
So, um, yes, Shakespeare could have known some black people. The question, in my mind, is then, did he do his homework? Did he bother to get to know any black people? If he didn't, was he being lazy? If he did get to know some black people and still wrote the Othello of the second half, who does become um, an obsessive, murderous honor killer, was he being a bigot? Um, because he, the Othello of the first half is certainly magnanimous. He's astute, he's mature, he's experienced, he's wise. Um, and then in the space of a single scene, the so-called temptation scene, Act 3, Scene 3, which is admittedly a long scene, he is persuaded that his wife has been unfaithful. Um, and not simply that, but that he should then murder her or um, execute her. Um, and, and so, and, but there are only, although it's a long scene, there are only about 300 lines in the text as, as written between Othello saying, perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee, and when I love thee not, chaos has come again, to his saying, barely 300 lines later, now do I see it is true, look here, Iago, all my fond love, thus do I blow to heaven, it is gone. Now, the worry in my mind is that happens very quickly. Um, and perhaps the, because of the convention of the Moors being um, perceived to be uh, prone to jealousy, to uh, irrationality, to violence, that somehow was the, the subtext. Well, those Moors are like that, aren't they? That explains the rapidity of this uh, transition. Um, and there again, that's, that, that gave, gave me pause for thought. So um, the, the idea too that, um, just going back to the idea that Shakespeare, did Shakespeare do his research? And it, it's widely thought that he read uh, John Poore's translation of the uh, geographical history of Africa by a man called um, Leo Africanus, um, in which he did make the point that no nation is so subject unto jealousy uh, talked about the blemii, the, the men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. But the more interesting thing is that he, he picked up the sensational bits of the story, but the more interesting thing was the author of, the, of that story, Hassan al-Wazan was his, re, his original name, a man who had been um, uh, expelled from um, Andalusia in, I think, 1492, had traveled extensively through Africa before being kidnapped by uh, pirates and uh, given as a as a hostage or a gift to Pope Leo the 10th. <laughs> <laughs> One of the Leos. <laughs> who, who then uh, baptized him as uh, um, Leo Giovanni Africanus. So, um, but that arguably was, uh, he arguably was a more interesting template rather than the sensational stuff that he wrote for his European audience. Now, um, we have to credit Shakespeare with sufficient imagination and intelligence to, to know that uh, what he read wasn't necessarily true. And certainly the Othello of the first part goes against the grain of the, uh, the Moor uh, as established on the Elizabethan stage. But then it, it is as if Shakespeare stretches the, the, uh, the, the bowstring very tautly and that, so that when he releases it, the arrow flies very fast and very violently, violently to its target. In other, in other words, he, uh, he um, goes against the grain of characterization, but only to have Othello revert violently to type in the second part. I will chop her into messes, cuckold me, um, and, uh, and so forth. Well, as, as, as you know, we, we've played it. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, so um, the, the more, uh, ultimately, the, the question is, um, what do we mean by racist? And to my mind, it, um, it's fairly simple that where race becomes the prime, if not the sole determinant of character, of value, of, uh, of moral value. Uh, and the suggestion, any suggestion that a character behaves as he does because of his ethnicity is by definition racist. Any suggestion that a character behaves as she does because of her gender is by definition sexist. And, and so on, you, you, you get the point. Um, but um, I, I think there are degrees of racism. You know, I think sometimes you have to try a little harder not to be racist. I think, come on, Jeremy Clarkson, you could have tried a bit harder 
when you said eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch it by his toe. You know, that I think um, was uh, lazy, casual racism. Um, it seems to me that um, there's racism by commission and racism by omission. And I would, I think my conclusion would be that Othello is racist by omission. And I say this because it seems to me that Shakespeare ultimately isn't that interested in Othello's psychology. I think he, where the point that he wants to get to quite quickly is the seismic eruptions of emotion, the, the Othello music, what's become known as the Othello music, the, um, the elaborate verse like to the Pontic Sea and uh, you know, his, his great um, speeches. Um, why do I say he's not that interested in Othello's psychology? Because Iago has twice the number of soliloquies that Othello does. Iago's soliloquies enable him to engage directly with an audience in a way that Othello's soliloquies don't. Put out the light and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. He's not talking to the audience, he's talking to a light. But once put out thy light, thou cunning's pattern of excelling nature, he's not talking to the audience, he's talking to the sleeping form of Desdemona. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, Othello's um, soliloquies don't reveal very much about him. He doesn't, he's not allowed to develop the same kind of relationship with the audience as Iago does. Um, Othello is, if you like, one of the, um, the victims, one of, if, if Iago is the cause, then Othello is the effect. Um, it seems to me that Shakespeare could try, have tried a little harder to, um, to allow us to um, enter into the mind of, uh, of Othello, but he didn't. Um, and I think he resorted to a kind of comfortable, complacent attitude where I don't have to explain very much about, about these moors because everybody knows what the characteristics of the moors are. Which is why in our production, uh, we have uh, attempted quite assiduously to avoid any conclusion that Othello behaves as he does because of his ethnicity. Um, not simply because of the casting of a black Iago, but also Iago is subjected to, for well, those of you who saw the production, to a, a fairly harsh interrogation. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, it's, uh, it, at every point, it's made very hard for Iago to, to persuade Othello to put his plot into effect. Um, and, and by the way, the, the, um, the fit in our production was not an epileptic fit, but for those who um, aren't familiar with medical terminology, it was a transient ischemic attack, a mini stroke, <laughs> which um, um, can often change the, uh, the brain structure and the personality. So we, were at, we went to some lengths to try to um, uh, pull the play back from suggesting that Othello is gullible because of his ethnicity. We tried to make it much harder for Iago to persuade him and therefore to make uh, Othello less of a fool and to make the play less racist. But so yes, in conclusion, it's, um, it's a, a play that's racist by omission rather than commission. <laughs>